Uh, we are focusing as well on the president right now. He has arrived in El Paso. Uh, he was earlier in, in Dayton, Ohio. Democratic uh, mayor of Dayton, Nan Whaley, was with him. Uh, she joins me right now. Mayor, thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Neil. Uh, how did it go with the president? That's it, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I know it's loud there. I apologize. How, how did it go with the president today, Mayor? Look, I think uh, the uh, the victims were super grateful to see him. Uh, the first responders uh, gave him uh, uh, something from the Dayton police, so they were uh, honored to meet the president of the United States. So you have been pushing very hard uh, for some sort of action on guns. The president seemed to intimate that there right. might be a way to do that. Did he specify what, what ideas he had in mind? Not at all. You know, we talked a bit about, uh, both Senator Brown and I talked to him about the assault weapon ban and how important that would be, and that would be the greatest gift he could give to first responders. But there was no real sense that there was, uh, this is what I'm going to do kind of uh, action. But, you know, I th uh, we, anim we animated that he has a lot of power and that if the president wants to get it done, he can get it done. I just hope he's not one of these, you know, all talk, no action politicians. Now, he has talked about trying to meet with a lot of the Internet and uh, a lot of these uh, high tech guys at the White House on Friday to talk about, you know, uh, violent games, that sort of thing. What do you think of that and whether yeah, that yeah. could be a contributing factor? We, you know, the country, Neil, that has the most violent uh, ga video games is actually in Japan, and Japan has no gun violence. So I don't think that correlation really works. Uh, what we're looking for is real uh, common sense gun uh, changes. You know, and things like in the state of Ohio, where 90% of Ohioans agree on universal background checks, on an assault weapons ban, around red flag laws, around straw purchases. And, you know, even Governor DeWine, who's a Republican, has introduced these kind of right. things, uh, like straw, straw purchases and universal background checks in Ohio. So we're looking for that same kind of leadership from the president. All right. And we had the governor on earlier, Mayor, to that point to say he thinks they, there would be enough bipartisan support for that. But uh, the president, when it came to assault weapons, didn't think there would be the environment or the votes. Like maybe he was talking about the United States Senate to make that happen. So short of that, are we looking at the tighter background checks? Are we looking at, you know, more of these red flag uh, beefing up the laws around them to, to alert people to those who are deemed dangerous uh, and to keep an eye on them? Is that where it will end up being? Look, I think, you know, the people of Dayton would be just pleased if uh, in this great tragedy something moves. You know, and uh, the red flag law that uh, uh, Lindsey Graham and Blumenthal are moving in the Senate is some place that we would be happy to see some movement on. There could be even an opportunity for them to introduce a pilot in Texas and Ohio where cities could do um, go right to federal court on red flag laws. Uh, I mentioned this to the president's chief of staff while we were visiting victims today. Uh, that's the kind of action that we're looking for, not some stuff that's on some video games that has no proof that, like, aligns to gun violence. All right, but uh, the, did the president signal to you, Mayor, that uh, he he thinks that on the, the issues you talk about, th there could be progress, that there's enough of a goodwill. You mentioned what your governor is doing, the Republican governor, that, 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 that there might this time be progress on that front. He said he was going to, you know, look at it. He didn't give me any sense of, like, Mayor, we're going to move. Right. But, you know, I intimated to, um, to the president that, like, I know he's a man of action. And so I'm hoping that he will show us this on, gun, on the gun control issue. Now, I know you were meeting with him with uh, your senator, uh, Sherrod Brown. There's been some friction between some prominent Democrats and, and the president on this issue. Um, the protests, obviously, were very real in Dayton. They're very real in El Paso. Many yeah. uh, argue he shouldn't even yeah. be there. He shouldn't have gone to Dayton and he shouldn't be in El Paso. Are you glad that he came? I think for the victims and for our first responders, they were happy to see him. And that was, you know, they've been through an awful lot. But, Neil, I'm not going to lie. It's hard on the community. I mean, you know, the minute that he announced he was coming, we just saw this hyper partisanship that we didn't see before the announcement. And I think that's what's so hard for us when we know we're a fragile community. We've just been through a lot of pain. 
Um, that tension was real. We saw it on the streets of the Oregon District earlier today, uh, and we didn't see any of that until the president's announcement. And that's just really what's sad about some of the rhetoric overall. I mean, it's just so extreme and so intense. And in Ohio, with both Congressman Turner and Governor DeWine, we're starting to see real people, come, you know, real both sides coming together to find win-win solutions around this gun violence issue. I just wish that nationally they could do that too. Do you think that extremism works both ways, Mayor, that everyone, maybe if they just step back, calm down, the, the stuff could get done? Yeah, I really think everyone needs to breathe. I do think it's on both sides, but I know that the president exasperates it, you know, so we were fine until he announced he was coming. And I mean, Neil, I saw it on both sides. It's painful because we really want to bring the community together. But personally, he was good with you. There was no friction with you or, or you with him. We had a pleasant conversation, but it was, you know, uh, Senator Brown and I did push him to do something, you know, particularly around the assault weapon ban. And, uh, you know, he kind of said, well, you know, Obama couldn't get this done. And I said, well, you know, Mr. President, maybe you can get something done that President Obama couldn't get done. I bet that's something you could do. You could find the votes.